Hi everybody, welcome to the Emory's Memories channel. I'm your announcer, Gary Beatty. This channel was created to feature interviews by Ralph Emory. There are over 125 interviews by Ralph for you to enjoy on this channel. This channel has also become a collection point for rare and in some cases never before seen shows and interviews. What you're about to see is one of 14 classic interviews hosted by the Lagarde Twins from Sydney, Australia. It's part of a TV series they created, and it's called Down Home, Down Under. Now, these interviews have remained in their private collection, and they've never aired on radio or television until now. And here's their one-on-one -on -one interview with Tom T. Hall. Welcome back to the God Twins Down Home, Down Under. And here to tell you about our very special guest is my brother Tom. I would like to have been a general, he said, to have changed the face of the world. Well, he has changed the world, the music world that is. His music is irrevocably stored and treasured in the hearts and minds of millions of people around the world. That's right, Tom. You know, he's a song stylist, he's a hit maker, he's a poet, a storyteller. He's controversial. He's Tom T. Hall. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank nice you, Tom. To see Thank you. you. Dad, Thank good you, to see you. Tom, we know that you've been down uh, uh, to Australia on several occasions, and, uh, and the Australians really love you. And they're excited about uh, a, a project, because the news is out down, down in mm -hmm. Australia, that you're working on a project concerning one of our most famous poets, Henry Lawson. Well, uh, I, uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, Henry Lawson, uh, someone said not the greatest poet, but certainly the most famous poet, the Australian poet. Uh, I have read several books about Henry Lawson, uh, researching his life and uh, his uh, times and his poetry. A lot of it, as you know, the earlier stuff was political because his mother was terribly yeah. politically active. But I loved the poems about the outback, and I was reading them, and I, I, his personal poems, the romantic poems, although he was not famous as being a romantic, but I'm reading these things, and they're written in the same meter uh, in which I write my songs. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading them, and they're kind of singing along. So Bill Mather Brown, who is also an Australian poet, whom you might know, lives in, in Australia. And Bill and I communicate uh, on a regular basis and write letters, and uh, we had spent some time together when I was in Perth this last mm -hmm. time. So I started singing some of these things, and I have some Australian friends in the States, and uh, I was singing them for them, and, and they liked them a lot. I found out that Henry Lawson's music had been set to, uh, Henry, his poems had been set to music previously, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I can't tell from looking at the music what kind of thing they did with it. So this would be kind of, kind of a new project. I've done a couple of demonstration things in the studio to see how they would come off, but uh, I think he's got 10 good songs. I think he's got a good album, and. Well, with the Tom T. Hall uh, a stylist, because you are a, a song stylist, and uh, you do write on uh, a universal level, you know, because your songs have, have crossed all kinds of barriers. We know that country music has no respect for geography, and your songs have proven that. And so uh, it, it'll be a, a new twist. It'll be, it'll be very interesting to have uh, an American storyteller, an American poet, um, you know, doing his interpretation of uh, an Australian poet. Well, I, I'm, uh, I'm interested in what uh, Australians would think about this. I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, do this if, 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 if it's uh, something maybe that shouldn't be done. I know he's a national treasure and all that. I think they'd and love I don't it, want probably. somebody to say, no. you know, what's this cowboy doing, you know, translating, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not translating these things. I'm singing them just the way. I'm not changing anything. I'm just putting melodies to them and singing them in my own voice. Uh, the song of the Bullock Driver and, uh, oh, he's got a beautiful song, you know, a poem uh, uh, called The Water Lily. Right. That's a great piece of work. Uh, and, uh, and some of these things really lend them songs to country and western interpretation. So if, if, it, if it wouldn't offend anyone and uh, if uh, I can find the right musical style, I'm not trying to cut them and and the music no. style of his day and time. No, you, I don't just, think anything Tom T. Hall would do uh, as a storyteller and your interpretation would offend anybody, anybody. Because it's a funny thing, you could arrive 
in, in London, jump in a taxi uh -huh. cab and start talking about country music, and the first name pops up is Tom T. Hall. Flying to New York is the same thing. And there is not too many country people or artists or stars, if you're superstars, you want to call them, that have that uh, world appeal. It, Tom, uh, as a boy, moving out of boy years into a, a growing young man, did you have uh, some bitter and lonely hours that uh, gave you this, this innate ability? Well, if I, if I had any times like that, they were of my own making because I grew up in a very big and loving family and uh, uh, we weren't uh, wealthy or anything. We weren't really poor. We always had plenty to eat and all that sort of thing. But as a young man, I was sort of, uh, I was sort of fanciful. I think even as a young man, I had a sort of a poetic bent and a romantic uh, attitude. I think my parents were a little suspicious that I was not of the disposition to become a responsible grown man somehow. <laughs> uh, in other words, they didn't want you to get into show business? Tom? Yeah, well, I was reading a lot. You know, I would read a lot and I would play the guitar and, uh, and uh, uh, I guess I was kind of a loner too. I like to spend time alone. And we lived out in the country where I could be out in the woods and the trees and things like that. What do the other brothers and sisters think of you? Would you want to say, hey, listen, hey, leave me alone. I just want to be myself. What do they think? Uh, well, I don't think they were too terribly disappointed. Uh, <laughs> you know, that uh, I wasn't messing around with them or telling them stories or, or some of these things. Were you close you, to your daddy, Tom? To your mom and dad? I mean, were, were... Well, there were, there were t uh, ten children. Ten, I, re I read family. that. Yeah, right. there were ten children Big in the family. family and uh, uh, my father was a preacher, as you might yes. know. Mm -hmm. A country and western preacher, by the way. <laughs> Well, and uh, a great man, but you know, he was a disciplinarian and with 10 kids he had to be. Uh, but uh, he was a loving and caring man, a good provider, a hard worker, and all of that sort of stuff. My childhood, like most childhood, was not idealistic. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't know, having, having this kind of background, uh, I think, serves uh, people who aspire to write and create. Take a break right now, but we'll be right back with our special guest, Tom D. Hall. Tom, what inspired you to write such a classic and meaningful song which gained world recognition as Old Dogs and Children and Watermelon Wine? I mean, what a classic. It is a classic. Well, thank you. I uh, met, uh, well, you know, when you talk about the song, once you, the song is about, is about the song. You say, I was sitting in Miami, you know, drinking. Oh, the fellow says, how old do you think I am? And uh, old people will sometimes do that, you know, they say, right. how old do you think I am? And, and this I... really happened? Oh, yes. This, this was in Miami, and uh, I went into this little lounge to have a nightcap. This is another thing Henry Lawson, uh, two things Henry Lawson and I have in common. We're both about half deaf, and we both like to drink whiskey. <laughs> uh, uh, and, but, you know, you get a little bit, have a few drinks, and not only can you not hear people, you don't care what they're saying anyway. So, uh, Lawson lived out there in a the world of his own. But I met this... Uh, man in in Miami in a bar and he did walk up and say how old do you think I am and I said I don't know and uh, but sometimes older people will ask you then you say oh I don't know 70 65 70 and I say 82 years old they want to <laughs> you know do you one better right <laughs> uh, but then uh, he was kind of cleaning up the place and he sat down and we started talking he had a great sense of values uh -huh. and I wrote that down on a on a bar napkin, I wrote watermelon wine. I thought, that's a beautiful phrase. You know, it's a habit of mine. It's a thing I do for a living. Mm -hmm. So put it in my pocket, and next day I got on an airplane and wrote that on one of those sick bags on an airplane, you know? <laughs> in case you're riding along and you get ready to bar for something like that. <laughs> and I didn't have anything to write on, so I got it out and I wrote it on a sick bag. Isn't this, and, uh, well, what and I just wrote it down the way it happened. Now, Tom, you know, now was that song, was that 10% inspiration and 90% perspiration or the other way around was that how long did it take you to finish the song off? I didn't I wrote it uh, I think it's about uh, the stop included it's about uh, two hours from Miami to Nashville well, that was, so it, I wrote it was it an inspired that. song right yes it was yeah. does it come easy to you or do you have to forge and hammer well and if I had been if I had been fabricating the song it would have taken 15 years but yeah. since I just wrote down what happened mm -hmm. I just wrote down I was sitting in Miami and and I just try to remember what happened mm -hmm. is all I did, so it wasn't a very difficult song to write. No. Tom, you, you have a, a, 
uh, an international appeal. When you write your songs, they have an international appeal. There are some people in Nashville that, to me, they localize the material and therefore limit themselves to the world market. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to a, a young, aspiring young writer? You know? Oh, gee, I don't know. Uh, you know, on, on that point, I can make, I can make a point on, on the question, I think. Uh, John Williamson, great yeah. Australian songwriter. That's right. Singer, marvelous entertainer. John and I were uh, visiting the last time I was in Australia and singing one another some songs. Mm -hmm. And that's, I told him that it was regrettable that we couldn't translate the Australian songs into, into American or whatever it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our songs can, can kind of cross over there. But John's got some great songs, but if you're, you know, sitting here in the United States listening Wouldn't mean to anything. Them, you don't know what, you don't know what... What he's singing about. What's going on, That's right. That's right, exactly. See, he's, uh, he localizes... They uh, have an automobile there that he wrote a song about. That old automobile, it's a 50s kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. kind I'm of trying, old, I'm trying to now? think. He's it's written so Australian many songs. an Australian car. I know. Oh, the Holden. The Holden. The old Holden. That's it, Holden? right. Yeah. The yeah. Holden, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, it, it's kind of a 1950s, it's, it's <laughs> the funniest thing in the world, and if, I don't know how it would, how it would translate. He's but a great writer. Sec one second, though. Take John, the John Williamson. If one of his songs, say, was to cross over into the American market and become a hit, because a hit song is a door opener, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's like when Rolf Harris had Time He Can't Go Down Sport. Right. Once you get the first hit, it's kind of a, a door opener that leads you into two or three other songs like that. Uh, but you have to have that burning desire to want to go to that particular country. So like you coming to Australia. If you didn't come yeah. to Australia and share your music and share your personality and your share time your, and your, your time with the yeah. Australian people, then uh, they're not going to get to know you. Because you know, Tom T. Hall can go and tour Australia once a year and, and, and uh, play to uh, sold out crowds. Because yeah, we were sold out. On our last tour, over you were in our, our hometown. Our latest tour, maybe I should say. You were in our hometown, yeah. Mackay, in that beautiful uh, civic center there. Oh yeah. Sold out. You yeah. had about a hundred Lagards. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they had a drink down at the pub at the hotel we were staying called. It was called uh, a P.S. I Love You. <laughs> I thought, you know, I recorded that song. I said, hey, maybe this is, you know, I was kind of flattered by that. Yeah. Uh, Tom. So, uh, former President Jimmy Carter, President of the United States, uh, who's a great communicator too, and mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's done a lot to foster goodwill around the world, you know, bringing nations mm -hmm. close together. Uh, you and the former President Jimmy Carter became real good friends. Uh, could you share with us and, and our friends watching uh, the program how that uh, that all happened? Well, as a uh, uh he was governor, he was in between uh, jobs. He wasn't governor of Georgia and he was not running for president. I guess he was unemployed. <laughs> and uh, I was doing a TV show in Atlanta and he liked my music so uh, he came out and, and stayed around the set for about, there was a network television special of some kind. We were all marching through a park and singing, doing a lot of television stuff. And he came out and sat on a rock wall and we talked for two or three hours and uh, just about, you know, things in general, and mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. such a quiet fellow. And then, uh, then we were invited back down uh, to Georgia uh, to have dinner with him and, and, uh, when the, uh, the television special came out. And we all watched the TV special. So we got to be good friends, and then, uh, but when he announced that he was going to run for president, uh, I said the same thing his mother did. I said, of what? And they said, of the United States. And I said, well, I... <laughs> My philosophy of life, I think, is this. If you've got a place to sleep and out of the cold and something to eat and your health, everything else is gravy. Oh. Everything. No matter what it is. Well, then how do you find success? What is, what is like... Uh, they a success say... is, is having a place to sleep yeah. and uh, something to eat and mm -hmm. your health. And That's... then everything else is gravy. Maybe, the, maybe some people think gravy, the gravy is success. Maybe it is. Mm -hmm. But and being alive and being healthy and being in out of the rain... Tom, you know, one thing, uh, uh, reading your, uh, uh, some part of your, your, your history and story, your background, uh, you, you made a very profound statement, and I think it, it's true, and a, a lot of artists should follow the same advice, that you put yourself in a position that you really didn't have to do what this, but you love to do this, but you didn't have to do it if you didn't want to. 
And yeah, that, right. that four makes you uh, more relaxed. You can enjoy it better. Yeah. Because you know you don't have to worry about the money to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See? Well, I do it, but I don't have a I don't have a high lifestyle. I don't have any airplanes. I don't no, have any don't yachts. Need that. I don't have any diamonds. I don't have any fur coats. Well, uh, so the club, I, I arrange things so I could stay in out of the cold. You know, mm -hmm. I have a roof over my head. And uh, now, if I want to go to Australia, I go because I want to go, not because I have to. We've been talking with our very very special guest, Tom T. Hall. Tom, it, it, it really has been a pleasure, I mean it sincerely, to have you on the program. And I know all your Australian fans, and you have many, uh, get, have enjoyed this, this interview. And we hope this will, won't be, be the last one. Well, Ted, I hope, uh, and Tom, I thank you all for having me, and I hope uh, the folks in Australia uh, will look for me to come back again sometime. If I may take the liberty, I'd like to say hello to the three of my dearest friends, four of my dearest friends okay. in Australia. Uh, Jumbo Jim, okay. John Laws. Tarzan and the bartender at the Chelsea Inn in Sydney. Oh, yeah. They all know. Oh, that's beautiful. What a great classic one on one interview with Ted and Tom, the Lagarde Twins. I want to tell you about their book, The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers. Let me take you back to the beginning. These twin boys walk 15 miles across the bushlands of Australia to a tent with a dirt floor and folding chairs. As the projector started up, the movie appeared in black and white on the screen. And there, for the first time, they saw Hopalong Cassidy. They ran almost all the way home and told their mom, we're going to become cowboy singers. Let me read the introduction to Showbiz Hustlers. Being raised in the bushlands of Australia in the 1930s and 40s was a rough and hard life. We didn't think about it back then because that's how life was. You had to live the hard life to understand it. But we also made a picture in our minds of the kind of life we wanted to lead, and it became a beacon that has guided us on our long journey in show business. We hope and pray that our book falls into the hands of our fellow strugglers and dreamers to give them unfailing encouragement to pursue their hopes and dreams. Above all else, we want to give God all the praise and glory for our long lives and for His mercy and grace in dealing with us throughout the years. So grab the reins and ride over one million miles with us from the bushlands of Australia across seven continents through 23 countries and 45 of the 50 states in America. Let's ride. Ted and Tom Lagarde. They appeared in Vegas, movies and TV shows. And for you Trekkies out there, get this. This book is packed with pictures and stories and is a must read. We'll put a link below the video so you can get your copy of The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers. The Lagarde Twins Showbiz Hustlers makes a great gift. This book is about twin brothers from Australia who had a dream and it came true. This is Gary Beatty. And as Ted and Tom Lagarde would say, Good day, mate. <laughs>